हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू नॉक नॉक यार एजुकेशन एंड नाउ आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर डूइंग गुड सो दिस वीडियो इज कॉन्टिन्यूएशन इन द लीनियर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन द टॉपिक दैट वी स्टार्टेड फ्यू डेज बैक सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद दैट टॉपिक सो इन आर लास्ट क्लास आई हैव इन द एंड ऑफ द क्लास आई एज द क्वेश्चन टू ऑल ऑफ यू दैट इफ टी इज़ अ लीनर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन दैन टी इज अ फंक्शन एंड इफ टी इज़ अ फंक्शन दैन टी इज अ लीनर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इज दिस स्टेटमेंट ट्रू और नॉट बट आई थिंक वेरी फ्यू ऑफ यू हैव आंसर्ड इट सो फॉर दैम लेट मी डिस्कस दिस पार्ट एज वेल सो इफ टी इज़ अ लीनर ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन If T is a linear transformation, then definitely, no doubt, T is a function, because uh, we know that a linear transformation is a mapping from the vector space uh, to another vector space over the same field. So obviously, every member of the vector space is beamed to a unique member of the another vector space. So T is a linear transformation, then T is a function. But if T is a function, if T is a function. then t need not to be a t need not to be a linear transformation fine and uh, to uh, give a example for it what we can use is that we just consider a, a you know function from r to r so suppose this is a function and what i need to do is that i considered this function t of x is equal to x square now if i uh, see it like r over r as a vector space and r over r as a vector space you can very easily see that this is not a linear transformation fine so i hope now all of you can check this very easily because in our last class we have very well understood that why this forms a, a linear transformation or not or we have uh, you know solved it by using example as well as we have done it by using the general method of t of alpha x plus beta y is equals to alpha times t of x plus beta times t of y so if you will evaluate the lhs part you will get alpha x plus beta y whole square and if you are going to evaluate the rhs part the value that you are getting is alpha x square plus beta y square which is definitely not equal to this lhs for all alpha beta in field r and for all x y in the vector space r that is why this t is not a linear transformation this is all what we covered in our last class so today we are going to study about what uh, we are going to study about the null space and the range space of a linear transformation suppose uh, somebody asks us what is the null space of a linear transformation so we should know it uh, very from the very basic so let's get uh, started with the null space so suppose we have a linear transformation t fine from a vector space v to a vector space w over the same field f fine so now if somebody asks you what is the null space then null space of any linear transformation is uh, represented by this or null space is also called as the kernel of linear transformation t so we can also write it down like this so either you write down uh, null space or you write down kernel the both are same thing so it uh, basically says that all those vectors from the vector space v which are being mapped to zero vector fine so what this definition says is that suppose this is our vector space v and this is our vector space w okay so we need to pick up those vectors from the vector space v which are basically being mapped to where to zero vector so suppose this element is being mapped this element is being mapped and this was a, uh, so obviously this element this element and this element will go to where will go to null space of linear transformation t so all those vectors in the domain vector space v which are being mapped to the zero vector in the co domain vector space w then those elements if you know put in a set then that set is called as the null space of t or kernel of t one very important thing which you should notice over here is that uh, since t is a li linear transformation t is a linear transformation in our last class we have understood that for any linear transformation the zero vector of the domain vector space will always being mapped to the 
zero vector of the co-domain vector space. So we already have one element zero vector which will always be mapped to the zero vector. It implies that null space of T, null space of any linear transformation is always a non-empty set. I hope you people might have got an idea about the non-empty uh, set that if a set contains at least one element then that set is the non-empty set. So the null space of uh, linear transformation is always a non-empty set because it will always contain one fixed element and that is the zero vector. It can contain other any elements as well but one vector that we will always get is the zero vector due to the definition of the linear transformation. This is it. So uh, now we will do few examples on null space and then we will see something very important related to null space as well. What is that? Uh, suppose we have been given a question like t from R2 to R2 and we have to and these are the vector spaces over the field of real numbers and we uh, such that t of x comma y is being mapped to x comma 0 we have already discussed these uh, you know linear transformations in our last class and we have been asked to find out the null space of this linear transformation what we can do here is that that uh, null space of t always in any question be it uh, your regular practice questions or your uh, exam questions always remember one thing whenever you have been asked to find the null space of any linear transformation don't get scared even if you think that the question is very difficult just take a deep breath and write down the definition of the linear transformation simply whatever i have told you write down the definition of the null space and put the elements and you will simply get it see how the definition that we have studied was this we see here i have written in the last line v belonging to vector space v such that t of v goes to zero write it like this now what is your v v is a two tuple so t x comma write down v is your r2 such that t of x comma y goes to zero how simple it is and zero vector is also looks like what two tuple see now you just need to solve it so solve it t of x comma y is equal to 0 0 so what is your t of x comma y it is saying x comma 0 now you do the two tuples are equal what does it imply the individual components are equal so what you will get here x is equal to 0 and y what about y y is independent y can take any value why because in the mapping also y is being mapped to 0 it is only x which is you know playing any important role over here if you will see x y is always being mapped to 0 so what is the null space that we got the null space that we got is x is your 0 and y remains as it is where y belongs to r this is your null space for this linear transformation t okay so this was the null space for this linear transformation so in our last class we have also done two more important uh, linear transformations if you remember that is we did identity transformation and we did a null linear transformation as well so what was the identity linear transformation v from v to v such that i of x is equal to x for all x belonging to v so suppose we want to find out the null space for uh, this linear transformation so what it is going to be first you write down the definition v belonging to v such that t of v goes to 0 and what does this t of v is t of v is nothing but 0 it means only 0 is the vector which goes to 0 so null space consists of only singleton 0 vector now you see one thing you can understand it from here very easily this is v this is v this element is being mapped to this this element is being mapped to this why because every element is being mapped to itself if every element is being mapped to itself so you see only zero vector is going to be the vector which is being mapped to the zero vector rest other vectors are being mapped to itself that is why the null space for this linear uh, identity linear transformation is nothing but a zero uh, vector or does it is a singleton zero vector okay now if we talk about uh, what if we talk about null linear transformation so what was the definition it was saying that this is from v to w such that 0 of x is equal to 0 for all x belonging to v 
so diagrammatically if we understand this thing what was this this is v this is w and every element of the vector space v is being mapped to where zero vector of the w so and what is the definition of the you know uh, null space the definition of the null space is all those v belonging to v such that t of v goes to zero but here every vector space every vector in the vector space v goes to where goes to zero that means what all those v belonging to v are going to be the null space for the zero linear transformation fine so this is uh, two linear transformations that we you know did in our last class so coming to one more important note over here that t is a linear transformation from v to w then your null space the null space that we study the null space is a subspace of what null space is a subspace of vector space v this is a very important thing now for the subspace you know that we should have a you know first if i am saying that w is a subspace of v then w should be the subset of v and that should be the non empty so you see that null space of t is nothing but what v belonging to v such that t of v equal to 0 so see here all those vectors inside the null space are coming from where coming from v so we can very easily say that null space is a subset of vector space v now we also know that zero vector is always contained in where null space this is always because t is a linear transformation so from here we can conclude one more important thing what that null space is going to be non empty that we have already seen now we will prove that this n of t is subspace of v so first we will write down our null space this is v belonging to v such that t of v equal to 0 suppose if you are confused you can uh, keep it equal to w and we need to show that w is a subspace of v so then in that case what we used to do for all u comma v which belongs to null space and for all alpha beta which belongs to field f what we need to prove is that your alpha u plus beta v must also belong to null space of t this is what we have to prove if we are able to prove it then it will be very easily uh, uh, proved that null space is a uh, subspace of the vector space v so if we want to prove that alpha u plus beta v belongs to null space it implies what we need to prove we need to prove that alpha u plus beta v is being mapped to zero why because if alpha u plus beta v is mapped to zero and all the members which are being mapped to zero where they belong they belong to null space so we will find out what we will find out the image of this t of alpha u plus beta v fine i can write it down alpha times t of u plus beta times t of v why why i can write it down since your t is a linear transformation but before that look at one more thing that since your uv belong to where let me write down it with a different color so that you can understand since your u comma v u comma v belongs to null space of t and all the members of null space t are also the members of where members of vector space it will imply that u comma v belongs to your vector space so one important thing here is that v is a vector space so for all alpha beta in field f your alpha u plus beta v must also belong to v and now you will ask a question why i am writing down this because you should know that every member of the uh, null space is a member which is coming from the vector space so first you should know that this alpha u plus beta v is a member of the vector space v that is why you will consider it from the vector space v so here we will use the property of the vector space of v that since v is a vector space so alpha u plus beta v belongs to v now i can uh, put it in the null space because null space is the subset fine so again what we did we will find out the image of the alpha u plus beta v 
सो टी टाइम्स एल्फा टी ऑफ एल्फा यू प्लस बीटा बी एल्फा टी ऑफ यू प्लस बीटा टी ऑफ बी सिंस टी इज एल टी नाउ सिंस यू कॉमा बी बिलोंग्स टू नल स्पेस देन वॉट आर गोइंग टू बी देयर इमेजेस ऑब्वियसली जीरो वैक्टर बिकॉज इफ यू बिलोंग्स टू नल स्पेस टी ऑफ यू इज जीरो वी बिलोंग्स टू नल स्पेस टी ऑफ वी इज जीरो सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो सो वॉट इट बिकेम जीरो सो a member alpha u plus beta v is being mapped to zero and all those members which are being mapped to zero where do they lie they go to null space of t and this is what we have to prove we prove that alpha u plus beta v belongs to null space and if it belongs to null space it implies what that your null space is a subspace of v fine so this was a very special thing about the null space that we studied today so this was uh, a class that i took for a very short span of time because we are taking class after a long time since i was not feeling well some of you are already aware of it so but don't worry and uh, uh, this was just to give you the classes so that you don't feel like the uh, classes have been stopped from the next session either i will continue with the live classes with the full course on linear algebra or i'll be posting few recorded videos and those will be based upon the practice session on the null space once we will finish with that we will go to the range space okay so uh, that's it for today's session and uh, uh, you will get a new video very soon either live or recorded okay so thank you so much